this is the Jaguar XJ, a massive executive saloon aimed at suitwear and office types and celebrities or politicians that like to be chauffeured around. And when I say massive, I do mean massive. This thing is huge. It's over one, two, three, four, five meters long. And this is just the short wheelbase model. The long wheelbase model is a bit bigger. It's about, well, it's about here. So as it sits under the umbrella of executive saloons, you've got some pretty high expectations. There's luxury, of course, there's a high performance engine, there's top notch technology, and there's also a sense of automotive superiority. And that means that this XJ goes up against the likes of the BMW 7 Series, the Mercedes S-Class and the Audi A8. But should you have a Jag instead? Jump inside this R Sport model and you're instantly hit with an array of overtly luxurious features, the thick smell of high quality leather being one of them. And that leather is plastered all over the dashboard, but it feels more like couch cushions than it does a mere trim. You also get this huge center console, which is decorated in loads of chrome and this materializing gear selector. And this leads up to the in-control Touch Pro infotainment system. And this houses everything from Bluetooth to 360 degree cameras and a heated seat hub to a TV. Yes, I said TV. The sat nav you get as well isn't just your average sat nav, it works more like Google. So if you're after an Italian restaurant, you just type in Italian and it comes up with the most relevant details. And the sat nav along with a few other features can also flood this TFT screen behind the steering wheel, which means you don't have to take your eyes off the road as much as you might in other cars. For me though, it's the little things that make it. And yes, they may be a tad superfluous, but I love them all the same. Like these A pillars that feel like soft rolled up towels. You've got this automatic glove box, these electrically adjusting headrests, and this nice analog clock in the dashboard. It's nice, isn't it? So this is where executive saloons are just a bit different. First off, you've got these lovely leather seats, which are ever so slightly reclined, and you, you can't actually adjust these, but after sitting in them, I think you'll, you won't really find the need to. You've also got this massive armrest here, which doubles up as a desk for your file of facts. You've also got some storage in here, storage here, and two cup holders. And these rear seats are actually cooled and heated. And you can control that down here or have your driver do it up front. Same goes for the likes of your aircon. And from a space point of view, there's loads of space back here, bearing in mind that the long wheelbase model actually offers more legroom. One thing I will say though, is that headroom is a bit better in its German rivals. And there are, you can sit three back here, three abreast very easily but if you want to make the most of the xj's luxurious practicality make the most of this armrest then you want to sit two instead of three so suitcases and golf clubs are most likely to adorn the xj's boot and there is enough space for both due to this nice wide opening and the fact that you can push stuff nice and deep into the boot yes it might be nice if it was a bit deeper and maybe the seats folded down but luxury is the magic word here not practicality so we're going to start our on the road section as a passenger and talk about what comfort's like in the back of the XJ. Now, the combination of these nice seats, these tinted windows and the lack of noise back here does make taking a nap very easy and very tempting. You can also have your own personal sun visor open or closed if you want to make it a bit cozier. And I must say that sitting back here, the cabin up front does look incredibly smart. But even with all of these little luxurious features, you can tell that there's a hint of firmness in the ride, especially when you go over bumps, big or small. So the question is, why didn't Jag just angle it towards comfort? Well, that's where driving pleasure comes in. See, when you're not flicking through the pages of the Financial Times in the back seat, the XJ is a car that can be driven, well, like a Jag sports car. Don't get me wrong, it's not testing to drive. I mean, drive it around town or on the motorway, and it really does just drive itself with its light and precise steering, making the sheer size of the car less intimidating. But if you do want to take it on some twisty roads, then you can whack it into dynamic mode thanks to Jag's adaptive dynamic system and make the most of its weightier steering, its enhanced throttle response, and like I said before, slightly stiffer, sportier ride. And suddenly, that somewhat yacht-like feel that some may experience of the size of the XJ just dissolves. 
some greater feedback through the steering would be nice, but for quick spurts of spirited driving, the Jag XJ clearly has a lot going for it. And the way it just masks, the, the way it masks its big physique through winding roads like this is just so impressive. And I haven't even mentioned the engine yet, which is a 3.0-litre V6 diesel mated to an 8-speed automatic gearbox. And this produces 296 brake horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque, a top speed of 155 miles per hour, and a 0-60 to 60 time of just 5.9 seconds. Okay, so you're unlikely to explore all this power on a daily basis, but it's good to know it's there when it comes to the likes of motorway overtaking. So luxury is gonna cost you. This three litre V6 R Sport model costs around £71,000 and upwards. Now, equivalent models from BMW, Mercedes and Audi pretty much cost the same, especially when you start to add stuff like optional kit with anything from 62 grand to 75 grand. Now, when it comes to fuel economy, Jag claims around high 40s. Now, we've been getting closer to about 35. So why go for the Jag and not one of its German rivals? Well, if you purely have to luxury, space and comfort, then by all means, go for one of the Germanic saloons, the S-Class, the 7 Series, the A8, all brilliant cars. The Jag, however, does still offer impressive comfort and luxury, but there's just something so involving about its drive that makes you think, yeah, why go for all work and no play when you simply don't have to? And yeah, the ride is firm, but it really does pay off. Plus, there's just something about owning a Jag and not a German saloon. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm British. But what do you think? Would you go for a Jag or would you go for a German rival? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the inquire button to find out more details about this car or for any other models, visit carkeys.co.uk. And to watch more reviews, click one of the links on screen now.